Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to build something really cool, an interactive 3D portal using Spline and SwiftUI. It's a gyroscope driven scene for an interactive portal controlled by Device Tilt using Spline's code API for SwiftUI. We'll go through building the shape, adding materials, working with interactions, exporting and integrating with SwiftUI, testing and using it on mobile devices. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a fully functional 3D scene that responds to your device's movement in real time. Let's create our 3D portal first, which is the main component in this design. We'll build the shape first and then focus on materials so you can follow along easily. This scene is also available to remix in the Spline community. So if you want to skip this part and go straight into exporting and integrating with SwiftUI, you can. The link is in the description. To build this scene, we only need three elements, the card, the background, and the cover. We have a card that works like a sort of window, a background that is the full scene, and a cover that masks everything so the background only shows inside the card. All right, without further ado, let's start. Open a new 3D file and delete this light since we don't need it right now. We can use the default rectangle to create a card, adjusting the size to 350 by 640. Set the corner to 40, then the extrusion to 4. You can also change the name here to keep everything organized. Now, for the inside of the portal, we'll duplicate the card and rename it Box. Change the extrusion to 800 and move it just behind the card object or change the z-axis to minus 800 in the inspector directly. Next, we want to create a shape that is inside of the portal. Let's create an S-shape using the path tool. Change the subdivision to 30, the size to 120, the sides to 24, and select round caps. Finally, adjust the shape a bit to make it look natural. And let's move it behind the card so you can see it through the window. We can't see the path right now, so let's select the box and set its visibility sides to back. That way we can see the path inside. Next, let's add a cube this cube will work as a cover to hide the background. Change the size to 1000 on all axis. Click the handle here and switch to left side view. Move it so it's behind the card and covering our path shape, or change the Z axis to minus 500. Moving on to materials, this part is really interesting because we want to create materials that show transparency and depth. The goal here is to make it feel atmospheric and visually engaging. Let's begin with the card. First, turn off the lighting, change the color layer to glass layer, and reduce the blur to zero so we can see the path inside clearly. Add a matte cap layer, go to assets, and choose this one. Reduce the opacity to around 80, Change the blending mode to overlay. Add a rainbow layer. Change the frequency to 20. Adjust the color a bit. And change the noise. Let's change blending mode to screen and reduce the opacity to 20. Now the card is looking transparent with a bit of color and reflection. Next, let's add material to the portal. Just select the box and add a depth layer. Change the type to linear. Move the left ramp to a bluish color and the right ramp a white color. Change the direction to Z axis, so X to zero, Z to one. Change the near and far.
To see the depth effects clearly, let's choose perspective. Then you can adjust the depth near and far a bit. Then add a pattern layer and move it under the lighting. Choose cross style and triplanar projection. Change the color to bluish color we used before and second color transparency to zero. Reduce the frequency to two and size to 0 0.4. Reduce the smoothness to 0 0.16. Set the layer transparency to 46. We'll also add a nice material to our path shape. Adjust the color to a bluish tone. We'll need a matte cap layer, so let's add that. Go to Asset and select the second matte cap. Set the transparency to 20. Change blending mode to screen. To wrap the scene, let's change the scene's background color to black. Now for our last object, the cube. Select it, change the color to black, adding a glass layer, put it under the color layer. Nice! Now you can see the box and the path inside through the card window. Try adding more elements or events to make your scene even more interesting, like adding this border detail on the card. Here is a short intro on how to do it. Duplicate the card twice. Adjust the size to 330 by 620 and change its corner radius to 30. Change the extrusion to 100. Select both two card and go to Boolean's operations and choose subtract. Now we have our border shape. We can move it in front of the card. This material is very pretty. We added a rainbow layer and a golden metal matte cap and a pattern layer to have this shiny golden effect. We also added text and applied the same material to it as well. You may see the rotation is a bit weird. We could just go back and select the card, press S to center the camera on the this card. Nice. For the path, you can also add more details such as adding depth, Fresnel, and a noise layer to the material. Besides, you can also add an event to your path. Select the path and create a new state. Then we can change the Y axis rotation to 360. Add a new start event and a transition action. Make sure the target is on the right object and set a linear transition with a duration of 10. Finally, let's add an infinite loop so the animation keeps going indefinitely. Another trick you can do is, for the box background, you can enlarge it or set to infinite so you can see a large vision through the window. Now it's time to export your scene to iOS. Go to the export panel, then to Apple and choose Embed. Here you'll see two ways to load your scene, by cloud or locally. If you're using the cloud option, go ahead and copy the code snippet and paste it right into your content view Swift file. This method does need an internet connection, but the great part is your app automatically updates every time you make changes and publish your design. If you prefer working offline, click the download button just below the code snippet and add the file to your SwiftUI project. This way, your scene loads directly from your device. No internet needed. All right, let's switch over to Xcode. Go ahead and create a new project. We'll set up everything from scratch. Next, we need to add the spline runtime package. Up at the top, click File, then select Add Package Dependencies. In the search bar, paste the package URL and look for Spline iOS. Once you see it, click Add Package, and then select your project again. Now, Spline Runtime has been successfully integrated. This ensures that Xcode can run your Spline scene smoothly and correctly. 
Now we need to bring the scene here, just paste the code snippet right into your content view file. Nice, it's already working. You can see it here running both on the simulator and on the actual device. Pretty cool, right? It's that easy to embed your 3D scene into an iOS app, but you might notice something when we rotate the phone, the scene doesn't move. To achieve this rotation effect on mobile, we'll use core motion to access the iPhone's gyroscope data. If you'd like to learn more about core motion itself, you can check out Apple's official documentation here. All right, back in Xcode, we've got a motion manager class that handles all the device motion sensing. It uses CM motion manager from core motion to access your iPhone's accelerometer. When initialized, it starts collecting accelerometer data at 100 frames per second. That's what gives us those smooth responsive motion effects. The data gets published using published, which means Swift UI automatically updates whenever new motion data comes in. That's the magic that connects your device's tilt to what you see on the screen. Now let's map the gyroscope values to the rotation of the X and Y axes inside our spline scene. And we'll do that using the code API for Swift UI. The code API lets you integrate interactive 3D experiences right into your project. It allows you to trigger actions, modify object properties, and create dynamic responsive 3D environments directly from your Swift UI code. If you'd like to dive deeper into the code API, check out our code API for Swift UI tutorial. In our scene, we'll use the code API to send motion data into the spline scene. First, we create a spline 3D scene controller and initialize our motion manager. We'll also set up two state variables, smoothed rotation X and smoothed rotation Y. These store the current rotation values and help keep everything moving smoothly over time. Now here's where the real magic happens. We use onChange to listen for new accelerometer data. When new data arrives, we calculate target rotation angles. For X rotation, we map the Y axis acceleration into angles between minus 60 and 60 degrees, depending on whether the device tilts forward or backward. The mapping is making sure that the natural position of the device in hand around 45 degrees will be our initiate zero degree. For the Y rotation, we multiply the X axis acceleration by 60, but we don't apply these values directly because that would make the motion look jumpy. Instead, we use exponential smoothing. Each frame, the rotation moves about 10% closer to the target angle. That's what gives you that buttery smooth motion you see. Finally, we find the 3D object named 3D portal in our spline scene and apply the smooth rotations to it. And that's it. Let's see how it works on our phone. Tilt your phone forward, backward, left or right, and watch the 3D object rotate smoothly in real time. It really adds a sense of depth and dimension. You can see how naturally it reacts to your movements. Just a quick note, the simulator won't show any motion data, so make sure to test this part on a real device. You can also add this code to preview the raw accelerometer data on your device screen for debugging or experimenting with other ideas. And there you have it. your very own interactive 3D scene that responds as you move your device. You can try this same approach with your own designs or explore community scenes like these. If this sparked some ideas for your own apps, let us know in the comments, we'd really love to see what you build. And if you'd like to dive deeper into integrating Spline with SwiftUI, make sure to check out Spline's official code API documentation We've left the link for you down in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.